So I'm sure you guys know recently I've been talking about a bunch of weird mysteries that a lot of the Grand Theft Auto Online player base is trying to solve, whether that's blowing up the dam or finding secret monsters within the sewers or trying to listen for, you know, creepy noises in the Mount Chiliad tunnels. Well, really no answers have come from those, whether they're conspiracy theories or bored players. Uh, it just makes for interesting conversations. However, today we're actually going to be looking at another mystery and we actually have an answer. So earlier today, uh, one of the most reputable members of the GTA community, Yan, he actually posted a video on his channel and it was really cool. I'll leave it in the description and of course full credit goes to him for figuring this out and discovering it. He uploaded a video said reaching the north icon and finding the real map limit. And I thought the video was really cool. Obviously he didn't do any commentary over it or anything like that. But since I decided to do this myself, I figured out a few things that he didn't touch on in his video. And I also wanna to try to give an explanation as well. So today we are gonna be finding out what really happens when you reach the real map limit in Grand Theft Auto V. So there is a prerequisite for this and that is you have to be on the PC version of Grand Theft Auto V because this is going to require a mod. It's essentially a mod that will prevent your vehicles from being destroyed when you reach the barrier of the map. So you guys know in Grand Theft Auto V, if you swim out far enough in the water, you'll be eaten by sharks. Or if you try to fly a plane fly enough, it'll eventually break down or the wing will fall off or the engines will fail, sending you crashing down uh, to the sea. And then of course you'll be eaten by sharks. That mod takes this away and gives us the ability to fly for an infinite amount of time. Now, if you do try this yourself, I just wanna let you guys know, you're gonna be flying in a straight line for about 20 minutes. That's right, so me in my Hydra right now, it took about 20 minutes for me to go from the top of Polito Bay to this fictional point where the map actually ends. So I was starting to think that I was either doing this wrong or you know that I, I didn't do something correctly here because around the 15 or 16 minute mark of me literally flying in a straight line, I was about to go crazy because I was seeing nothing more than just water. There was no variation at all. And then I reached this part of the map, which of course is the real map limit. And this is what actually happens when you reach the end of the map. Essentially what's gonna happen is the camera is going to abandon you. So this is actually super weird because you can see right here, the jet is still flying and I'm still controlling it, yet the camera is stuck kind of at this barrier. It's almost frozen in time and no longer follows you around. Now, one of the things that Yan's video didn't mention is the way the kind of the camera angle works. So what actually happens is the camera will freeze in the exact same spot in which you leave it off. So whether you're looking at the plane from above, below, from the left and the right, or in first person mode, wherever you leave off this plane or whatever vehicle you choose to bring out here, it's going to keep you frozen in that camera mode while your plane or your vehicle continues to fly off into the sky. So I did that multiple times here and I just wanted to see ultimately how it worked. And you gotta be careful here because sometimes if you get frozen in a weird camera angle, it is incredibly difficult to control your vehicle. In this case, I had the Hydra, so it made it a little bit easier, but you can see here, when you don't have control of the camera angle, it's like it's everything is just happening away from you, and that is super, super weird to experience. By far, the weirdest thing was definitely the first person, though, because the HUD of, like, the fighter jets was still on your screen, even though you're not operating a fighter jet anymore, so I thought that one was extremely cool. And you might be wondering to yourself, exactly how far away are we from the map? And what I'm gonna do right now is pull up the start menu and just start scrolling down. So this is not sped up up or anything. This is legitimately how long it took me in order to scroll from my location all the way zoomed out up at the very northern part of the map to get back to the actual Grand Theft Auto V map and Polito Bay. So like I said, that's probably why it took me about 20 minutes in order to get to this fictional location where the map actually ends because it is that far away from the game. Now, I don't exactly know what's going on here between the version that kills us without mods and the version where we lose the camera angle with mods, but it's almost like an endlessly generated ocean because there is absolutely nothing out here. And that's also one of the uh, comments that I saw on Yan's video is that he should do this with a no water mod. Well, fear not, 
that's exactly what I tried to do because I saw those comments and I was like, you know what? That could be pretty cool, a no water mod. So interestingly enough, the no water mod kind of worked, but like I was explaining earlier, when you get out that far, the ocean really isn't even an ocean. It doesn't have life. It doesn't have, uh, you know, things in it like sunken ships and coral or anything like that. So while the regular part of the world had no water, when I used the no water mod out in this abyss, it's just empty and I even at the end of the video just for fun I wanted to crash my jet into the water to see what would happen and it is literally an endless abyss so that might be something else I try in future videos maybe going to the bottom of the endless ocean right here what would happen if we did what would happen if we just sank forever? If you guys really want me to try and cover that in a future video, I will. I also have ideas about going to space, maybe looking for a mod that will take the boundary off of going uh, vertically in the map as compared to horizontally. But in case you guys were wondering what the real barrier is for Grand Theft Auto V, this is it, and this is actually what happens. So this was definitely a shock to me because honestly, I didn't think there was anything else past the part where your plane engine would get destroyed or where the shark would eat you. In fact, I wanna know the, the science and the technical like, support behind this. How does Rockstar generate this endlessly generating ocean that allows me to just fly this hydrojet for 20 minutes in a straight line, but why at a certain point does it do this? Why at a certain point does it kind of kick me off? That is something that is super weird, but this indeed is the real limit of Grand Theft Auto V's map and the real limit of Grand Theft Auto V's oceans and how far you can travel in game. So in case you want another perspective from this, I will leave a link to Yan's video in the description. It's really cool and he has some uh, cool insight that he puts on the screen as well. So definitely make sure you check that out. But I thought this was weird and one of the definitely interesting mysteries of Grand Theft Auto V. And now you know the real limit behind Grand Theft Auto V's map. So if this was something that you guys didn't know or found Found interesting or curious be sure to drop a like rating on the video that would be awesome and also subscribe to my youtube channel if you are new or you like daily gta 5 videos like this without the way guys like i said thanks for watching take care and i'll see you guys in the next video